guys welcome back to my channel and it is actually december the 8th and i just got my set three score back and i passed <laughs> so and as you can tell it's around christmas this is actually in the residence area and i set up this beautiful christmas tree as well as all the ornaments i'm gonna have to get some little presents for the bottom but yeah so i just wanted to come and speak with you guys in regards to how i studied for step three and what are my recommendations so overall like step three for me was i just honestly just wanted to pass so if you're looking for like you know super like oh 90 percentile top 10 percent or something this is probably not that video for you okay i'm just being quite honest um my whole goal was just to pass because my issue was my original plan was to take step three before residency started which i highly 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 recommend so but that didn't happen so because of that, I was, supposed to, I was supposed to graduate early December of 2020. Match was in 2021. However, due to COVID and um, we're all still requiring the same amount of weeks in order to graduate, my, I didn't finish all the way. I didn't finish my schooling until the very end of April, like beginning of May. And then graduation was the second week of May our second or third week of May. And then the thing is, in order to take your step three, you have to be ECFMG certified. And how do you become ECFMG certified? You need your degree. And I didn't have it until June. So, and that's when orientation started and I was just out of luck because orientation started and I was like, okay, I can't even register for this. <laughs> you can go, I don't care. <laughs> You're good. So um, that's Jessica. That's one of the um, program administrators. She's really nice. Uh, but anyways, so you uh, basically in order to get ECFMG certified, if you're a USMG, you have to have your degree. And then your school has to send like the transcripts and your degree to the USFMG, which is like the foreign medical graduate for people to actually register for uh, step three. So they have to have all of that. And I didn't get that until June and orientation started in June. So I was like so focused on like just trying to get ready for residency that I was like, I, I don't have the time for step three. Like I just can't. So I pushed it. I, I didn't necessarily push it back because I never, I couldn't even register for it, but mentally I pushed it to November. So that's when I took the test and so the thing with step three is very different from the other steps like they ask questions about step one next a little bit about pathology they ask a little about step two and then of course it's two days the first day to me it felt like step one material and like biostats and then step two felt like straight step two ck but with cases and I feel like a lot of people sleep when I, it's like a slang word sleep, but basically they don't pay a lot of attention to the cases. And the cases is really what makes a difference, I think, as far as pass and fail, because it makes up like a big portion of your exam. So with the cases, um, what I used for the cases was CCS cases online. I didn't really like new world cases because they didn't provide a lot of feedback. And you really need a lot of feedback because it's not like the rest of the test where it's like multiple choice and you can pick up pick the answer even if you don't know you can pick an answer hopefully it's right with cases you have to type in literally everything in order for you to get results so you got to type in a cbc you got to type in a cmp then you got to check for the results then you have to check for x-ray then you can put in consults and then they talk what the consult says and blah 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 then yeah i mean so it's and you have to put it in specific ways so you can't use like two letters like if you're looking for a tsh like thyroid hormone it, you can't put ts you have to put tsh or if you put lh for luteinizing hormone that's too short so they have you have to put luteinizing hormone so it's like spelling things things that they particularly look for like preventive measure like if a patient is less than 65 did you tell them about the colon cancer screen did you talk about the vaccines like flu vaccine did you talk about DTAP did you talk about 
a mammogram if they're um, a woman or they talk about colon cancer. So you have to talk about that too. So it's a lot of like, it's literally what I do every day, but you have to be very specific because sometimes we have like order sets and it makes it easy to forget some things. But overall, I really felt that the CCS cases were very helpful. The, I did those twice. I did all of them, they're like 140 cases. I did all of them twice. Um, I, only, I didn't do your well cases. I didn't feel like that that was a lot of help. But as far as like the questions for step three, I used um, I used you I bought you wrote actually really early in my the end of my fourth year like around December and I was like kind of doing it here and there so I kind of did it like one and a half times but I knew that because I haven't been in OBGYN and I haven't been in peds rotation for over a year I was gonna forget a lot so actually my friend let me use his step 2 CKU world question bank just so I can do OBGYN questions and questions which helped me out a lot so that's like the questions that I use I just use you wrote step three and I use the OBGYN and Pete's portion and the shelf portion for step 2 CK um, in addition to that I, I listen to a lot of podcasts y'all know I love divine um, divine intervention podcast I used all of his stuff um, in regards to that so that's really what I did. So the breakdown is like I was saying, like day one is like step one, it's like six, seven hours. Day two could be uh, I think it's around eight or eight. It felt like nine hours, but it's like eight hours. I felt like day two was easier than day one because day one was like a lot of bio stats in step one material, like stuff that you don't normally see. Because the issue is when you're in residency, you don't. It's more of like you're doing, especially if you're in internal medicine, it's more of like management, management, management. You don't really necessarily remember the chromosome or the gene or the penetrance of some of the stuff. It's like, okay, this patient has um, a web neck, um, um, what is it, shielded chest, streak, streak ovaries, and has issues with mental development and they're female. Okay, I'm thinking about Turner syndrome. I'm thinking about aortic dissection. That's what I, I think. But day one, it was okay. What chromosome is it like? <laughs> what is the genetics behind it? So it's like a lot of stuff that you may have forgotten on day one. So day one is usually the roughest for a lot of people, but day two is a lot more simpler or not simpler, but it's a lot more familiar to step two CK, which a lot of us has already take have already taken. So yeah, that's really what I did. I got my score. My whole thing was just to pass so I can move on with my life and study for the internal medicine board exams. Cause that's my main focus, not step three, honestly. So that's really what I did. And when I got my score, I was so excited. I probably show like snippets of it. Um, but yeah. I'm Y'all. I passed that three! <laughs> <laughs> I am so freaking excited. I am freaking done with step three. super grateful and thankful to God and well, my family, my friends and everyone that supports me because studying for step three during residency is no joke. Like, especially if you're in like, like I was in wards, it's like six out of seven days out of the week. Some days can be from like 5 a.m. to 5 p.m. Some days can be 5 a.m. to uh, 7.30 p.m. So you imagine working all day, dealing with patients, and then still having to learn how to be a resident, um, how to manage patients effectively, because you're no longer a student, you're the primary doctor, you're the, you're the one who's making the shots, to coming home 
in studying? Ma'am. Ma'am. Where did you do that at? Where did you do that at? Because I was tired. Like, I, I, right now I feel really, like, mentally, emotionally exhausted from everything. Um, but I'm fine. But, whew. It's a lot of work. So, if you can, if you can, I would highly suggest taking it before residency starts. Because once residency starts, residency, they're going to have their own things that they want you to do. Like, projects, research, and your own, like, stuff that you have to do in regards to, like, projects and dealing with patients patients families and different um, requirements for each uh each different attending or each different type of like um block requires different things so yeah that's really what i did and i hope this was helpful to somebody i know it's not like the best like oh i'm gonna get like 290 or can you even get a 290 i don't know but look i passed it's over I'm done. I am a doctor. But it's only up from here. So I'll see you guys later. Bye. And Merry Christmas if I don't see you from there.